this is my sister Julie Dondino, and this is her story on why we uh, are so in favor of sharing her story uh, about um, colorectal cancer. We'll be adding this throughout so it doesn't matter if we make mistakes. So Julie, I'm going to ask you some questions, but let's just start out by you can tell me when you were diagnosed and kind of what you've been through. Well, I was diagnosed on March 2nd, 2017 with rectal cancer that had spread to my liver and to my lungs. Okay. So the first few months, tell, take me through uh, all it went. First few months, we did 68 weeks of radiation and chemo. And when that was done, it didn't change anything in size or shape. So then we started with a uh, 12 week of chemo only. And, and so we did chemo for 12 weeks and stopped that probably in October. And then we started a heavier regimen of chemo in October through December. That's when what happened? When what happened? Well, I was, I started bleeding. Instead of my discharges of having diarrhea, I started bleeding blood. And so I was going to the doctor for that. And that they decided, Mayo decided to have the rectum removed here in Bismarck which I did in January. So I had my total rectum removed back then, and then we've had some complications on and off since then. So in January, when I came and saw you and you're in the hospital, you asked me, writer boy, to share your story. Hey, write this down and share it. Why did you want other people to share it? Because there's sort of a premise that rectal cancer is should be something to be quiet about and should be ashamed about because that's coming from the butt area well it's it's the second leading cause of death is colon rectal cancer so it should be over you know it should be just as much publicity to cure it as it is to cure breast cancer and I feel like more people if, as long as they get out if they know that I have rectal cancer we've had at least 70 people that have gone out and had colonoscopies since then and since they have found out they've said that they've had some polyps a couple of them had cancer but they were in stage one so they're already cured and uh, yeah so if we get the word out to have a colonoscopy sooner if you see the if you see the symptoms you should go into your doctor and get it checked what are some of the symptoms I thought I just had hemorrhoids and when I went in it was more like I was constipated uh, really thin stool I like I said I thought I had just hemorrhoids so it wasn't no big deal but then when I went into the doctor they said well you might have diverse reticulitis well you can get checked on that they didn't even seem to be too worried about it but then I had so I had went in for a whole health whole health can scan I had my so I had no problems with my heart no problems with diabetes no problems with my, you know, they showed all the rest of the liver, lungs, everything was all good. But then when I did the, um, we did the colonoscopy, about a week later, they came back and said, you have stage four cancer. So where are you at right now with it? I still have stage four cancer. It's incurable. Um, right now, they've given me some options to do either some immunotherapy out of Bismarck, North Dakota, or do two clinical choices out of Rochester, which would leave me with um, going down there every two to three weeks to Rochester, depending on which clinical I would depend on. And one of the, the clinicals, that, the one that's every two weeks, I, it could be that it's a, you, they give you a placebo instead of giving you a regular treatment. I don't know if I'm you know, willing to take that risk or not. Uh, the chemotherapy, one of the side effects it left me with was neuropathy, so my, I have very little feeling in my uh, fingertips. They're all, they're, they feel like you put them in a bucket of water with pins and needles. And so I'm always constantly moving my fingers around. For all the people, you got a pretty good following what would you tell those people and what did it mean to you to see all of the response are you surprised by how everybody 
responded to you? Oh, I'm overwhelmed by all the, the people that have come out of the woods, see, that have helped me. Because it's like people, friends from high school, college, uh, wor work from years, bef you know, 20, 30 years ago are coming out to support me, which just means so much to me. And um, yeah, you're in awe of who comes out. I just, I'm more in awe of like the, I'm glad somebody asked me, you know, would you have wished that you did the um, TED colonoscopy four years ago? Well, yes and no. It's like, if I would have done it four years ago, who knows what they would have caught at that time. It, it might not have even shown up, but I'm just glad I had the opportunity to catch it and have the chemo and have all the tests that we are going through so that we can fight it. And what would you tell somebody who says, I, I don't need it or I don't have time? Well, you gotta make time, otherwise you don't have any, t you don't have any time. It's, <laughs> it's do or die. <laughs> Tell me about what's coming up July 11th. Uh, July 11th, we're doing a, my friends, and my sister-in-law, my brother, and a group of friends are putting a benefit to silent auction together for me. That will be at the Bismarck Elks on July 11th. And we've, they've gathered some amazing um, silent auction items and items that might go on to a live auction or a bucket list. However, they decide to auction those off. Uh, it's going to be a great way to see old friends because people are saying they're coming that I haven't seen for a long, long time. Want to add anything else? No. All right, we'll do that real quick. This is Julie's place, but I am trying to. Actually, I'll do this real quick. See if we can get in there. That's her brother. That's me. <laughs>